Today we're going to explore another feature on your graphing calculator. How to find the zeros of a function. First of all, what is a zero? Well, a zero has many synonyms in mathematics. It's also called the root of a function. When you graph a function, the x-intercept is the zero, or the zero is just the solution of a function when it's equal to zero. So for example, let's say I have this function f of x equals 2x squared plus 5x minus 12. The zero of that function would be the solution to the equation 2x squared plus 5x minus 12 equals zero. Let's say we want to find the zeros of that function, f of x equals 2x squared plus 5x minus 12 on your graphing calculator. What we're going to do is we're going to graph that function and then tell the calculator to find the x-intercepts. So first step, press the y equals button. We're going to go ahead and enter in the function. So we already have a y equals written for us, so all we have to do is write in 2x squared plus 5x minus 12. By the way, this is a TI-84 plus silver edition, but it could also be done on just a normal TI-84 plus or TI-83 plus. Now we're going to press graph and the calculator graphs it for you. This is a parabola that we're seeing. Now what we want to do is bring up the calculate menu by pressing second trace. And we want to select the second option, zero, by either pressing two or scrolling down and pressing enter. I'll go ahead and press two for zero. Since there is more than one zero here, the graphing calculator needs to know which value to find for you. When the calculator asks for a left bound, as it is doing right here, that means that you want to move your cursor with the arrow immediately to the left of the zero that you want to find. Now, I can't even see the cursor right now, but if you keep pressing the left arrow, eventually it will show up. So we just have to keep moving it, pressing that arrow, until we can see it. And there it is right there. And we want to move it to the left. Even though it looks like the cursor here is above the zero, it's theoretically also to the left of it. So that suffices for showing the graphing calculator how to do its job. So I'm going to press enter now. You'll see a little triangle here that shows you what the left bound is. Now the graphing calculator is going to ask for a right bound right here. So that means you want to move the cursor directly to the right of the x-intercept. And again, it looks like it's below, but it actually is also to the right. So we'll press Enter. And you see another triangle. This is telling the calculator that it's going to find an x-intercept, or a zero, between these two triangles. Now the calculator is asking us to guess where the zero is. So we're going to move our arrow directly above the x-intercept. If you can't get the cursor exactly above the x-intercept, that's okay. Just get it as close as you can and press enter. You can see that when y equals zero, x equals negative four. So that's one of my zeros. Now we need to find the other zero. So we're just going to repeat the previous steps. Go to second trace, select the second one, zero, by pressing two. It's going to ask us for a left bound, so we're going to move the cursor so that it is directly to the left of that intercept. So now it is to the left, press enter. Now we want to move it directly to the right. That looks like it's about to the right. Now we're going to guess by moving the cursor directly above. Whoops. Press Enter. And you can see that this 0 is equal to 1.5, or 3 halves. So the zeros of f of x equals 2x squared plus 5x minus 12 are x equals negative 4 and x equals 3 halves. 
on your own now, try to find the zeros of f of x equals 3x squared plus 9x minus 12. The zeros are x equals 1 and x equals negative 4.